This was made using the techniques we discussed in our original workshop, found objects, vegetables. And this particular project was a residency I had done at Archbishop Ryan High School. The, I guess they were mainly juniors and seniors. And the idea was to study patterns in nature. And this was a program through the art museum. So we, we made several trips to the museum and studied nature patterns in various um, paintings and decorative art forms. And the idea that we all came up with was we would do an installation. So each student, we had a template to make a, a cube. So they had a template to, to cut out a cube and then print on them. And, and people did two or three, and then they, they picked their favorite one and combined it as a, as a um, part of this installation. And I, I have one more that I could show. This is, that's just more of a detail. So, I think, I don't know if I said this, they were like six inches by six inches by six inches. So that just gives you an idea of the scale. And I think the work is pretty good. You know, they, I, I'm always amazed at what high school and, and even grade school students do, given the chance. So I just had completely forgotten about this project and I just thought it was worth bringing up to share here today since it is using exactly what we were talking about. And I think even one... Um, when you say there was a template, were they printing directly on the, the board that would become the box? Yes, so the template was just, it, it looked like a giant X, I guess. And it, you know, they had to trace it and cut it out and then they printed on it and then when you fold it up, it becomes a cube. So wonderful. I'm yeah. so glad to hear that they're six by six. Yes. You can tell the scale. Yeah. Photo. Actually, and now I'm seeing there's quite a few people that sewed onto, onto these. So uh, that's pretty neat. How many artists are we looking at here? Well, um, I'm thinking there were probably 20 kids in that class, and again, mostly juniors and seniors. So that project was done in 2016. So. Did anybody um, want to go over any of the things that we talked about, or do you want to just start sharing what you've done? I think issues might come up as we're sharing. You know, people okay. might remember things that maybe they want to know more about or okay. work well or didn't. So maybe we could do that as, as you're sharing. Um, ask Diane her advice. It also looks like on these, now that I'm looking at these, that another thing they were doing was they were making their own rubber stamps. Oh. Now that I remember, that was also a component of this. So I am seeing, aside from some vegetables and just freeform printing, I'm seeing some small stamp-like images. And now that I remember, they, they did carve rubber stamps as well. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah, these are fantastic. A little scorpion. Yeah, I'm always real nervous right. about linoleum knives and <clears throat> kids, but they're, you know, they they were pretty good with them. There were no injuries, so. <laughs> There's the only criterion for success. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody gets hurt. Okay, I'm going to give you your screen back. Okay. And uh, are we are we sharing my screen now? Ah. Oh. Uh -huh. 
Now, whose is this? Uh, this is Tina's. Okay. Yeah, this is a collaboration uh, postcard between Susan and myself. Okay. She did the background, and then I put the little animal creatures in it. And the texture. And the texture. Okay. Which was printed. <laughs> yeah, bubble That's wrap. That's really lovely. Uh, oh, what do you mean by printed? Uh, I just rolled some white paint or gesso on bubble wrap and then pressed it in. Oh, okay. It, that kind of little snowflakey, you know, whatever atmospheric effect. It's nice to see the different textures you get from different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's terrific. Isn't that beautiful? I know, and I get to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm assuming the top layer of that is collaged over the, the there's collage material on the very top. Is that correct? Correct, yeah. So uh, the shadow is actually the paper that the collage was cut out of. So it was like a stencil. Okay. Uh, I guess that's a kind of printing as well, right? So I, I took the right. negative part of the, the bird and then spray painted its, its shadow mm -hmm. and then collaged it on top. Yeah, and then that was one of the things we talked about with stencils and masks. So yeah, that's definitely, definitely a form of printing. Oh, I'm so glad you said that, Tina. I didn't realize that was what you did. Mm -hmm. like, I kind of forgot. <laughs> stop and think about how did she do that, and, and that's really great to know. That's very clever. Yeah, it is. I love it. And are all these yours, Tina? Yeah. Okay. I went a little crazy this weekend and oh, made a lot of things. <laughs> well, actually, one, one is Laura's. The last one okay. is Laura's. Laura, are you still with us? I'm, yeah, I'm here. Um, I'm going to hold up that the actual card um, okay i can't see myself so uh -huh. you know okay i have to stop uh, i have to stop sharing because the, the photo doesn't really capture oh my goodness it's more yellow in real life like even now i'm looking on the uh -huh. screen and it's it the whole card is yellow but it looks more white um through the screen and on my um camera but I used just um, what was in my kitchen um, to make this uh, saffron. I had a little packet of it and um, I cut out posts. I was involved in a postcard, printmaking postcard exchange this summer. So I cut out, I made uh, postcard size pieces of watercolor paper and dyed it with saffron that I boiled in hot water and then soaked the paper in it. And then um, the circle, I what I did was um, I boiled red cabbage to get the dye out of it and then put some onion, like rings of onion in it and use that as my, um, I don't know, the stamp, I guess, mm -hmm. to make the circle. Wow. So you- The coolest colors. I love that. Oh, really, really neat. I just oh trying to find something that would stand out and work. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So how did you get the circle? Can you explain that to me? Um, yeah, uh, just an on I had a white onion that I cut, um, you know, I cut the onion and then put it in the, uh, the purple, the red cabbage water and let it soak. And then I used it as a stamp to make, you know, stamp on here. <laughs> And did you, did you seal that? If you seal it, would that make it color fast? Um, I did not seal it. I don't it. know if that would make it color fast. I don't really know if it would make it color fast, but I'm curious to know what you think about it. I, I don't, I have no idea. <laughs> Find out, yeah. It might, you know, I, I would think it could, uh, if you did seal it, I would spray it rather than brush it because it could activate the pigment again if you wet it again. So I would go with um, a spray fix if you're going to do that or varnish or, or whatever. Um, but that's really, that's, that, that's taking found things to a whole new level. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
Very nice. I want to uh, go to the store. This was like earlier in the summer and I was still afraid to leave the house. So uh, I was trying to find what I could use that was available. And it was fun. And is that the saffron label from the package? Yeah. I think oh, it, oh, I oh. added a little, you know, layer to it. Actually, this is coming up. The, the image I'm seeing that Bob's sharing, it, it is, it's coming up very yellow on my screen. It's yeah, I mean, if I'm, with my own eyes, um, the parts that are white are, that is showing up on the screen are actually, it's very pale yellow. Okay. For some reason, it just wasn't. Okay. But so, it so, off as yellow here, so, yeah. So what looks like blue to me, that's an artifact? That's, uh, because I'm, I'm seeing blue alongside the yellow. Yeah, I think it's like a super white, like almost a bluish white coming through the, like, that's actually the paper. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. It's just a very pale yellow. It's beautiful. Um. <laughs> I feel like boiling vegetables all of a sudden. You know, right? <laughs> just a watermark is just so strong and nice. I know if you boil onion skins, they give you a really nice color as well. When I was into paper making, mm. people were experimenting with all kinds of, boy, you know, beets and whatnot yeah. to, uh, yeah. to color the pulp. So, You know, what I thought at first is that you'd just like set your coffee mug down on the paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can do that too. <laughs> so, one thing I'm noticing, I'm a, I'm a watercolor a watercolor artist. And um, so you see down in the lower right of the circle how there's such rich purple there. So when you're working with watercolor, if you see how the edges down in the lower part, the edges have the deep color. Yeah, mm -hmm. in there. In watercolor, the way you would want, the way you would achieve that is if you use your, a lot of water, the pigment tends to collect at the edges. Mm. So, you know, you got that randomly because because it was a very wet a very wet print yeah 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 so that's what we learned from this right is that if it's very wet from with even with the vegetable the pigment collects in the edges hmm. is that right i mean it appears to be true because i'm seeing even in the lighter areas that this pigment collected on the on the edge laura is this watercolor paper yeah it, okay mm -hmm. The only reason I ask is because the texture has sort of a, a paper towel and I, I was wondering if you went all out and just did a whole kitchen thing and printed on a paper towel. No, <laughs> no, no, I purposely use work color paper. Okay, <laughs> it has a very strong, a very strong paper towel to, to have. No. <laughs> He's messing around with the color. Hey, Laura. <laughs> yeah. So I've been doing a little bit with making my own ink. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I keep reading is vinegar is supposed to set the beets mm. and the onions and those colors. So you might try that on another little scrap of paper. Okay. Um, otherwise, I would just keep this out of the sunlight mm -hmm. to preserve the color a yeah. little longer. Okay. But I, I love it. I think that's a great idea. It's so much fun. Yeah. Um, sorry, or should we move on? Yeah. It does, um, so this is Tina's series coming up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh my lord. So yeah, it's all one piece. Um, <laughs> I, I had a funny way of getting here. Um, Diane, I was so impressed. You mentioned one brief moment, smoke prints. Okay. And I was like, I want to do smoke prints. That sounds awesome. So I googled it and I was going to do it and I'm wandering around my basement and I couldn't find any of the material I needed. Um, and then I saw this um, vent cover and I was like, well, okay, scratch the smoke prints. Uh, I bet this could print. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I just inked it up with, um, with tar. 
some liquid tar and um, oh my God, look at put that. it on these old panels. And uh, now, and what, used... did you, what did you say this was? An old bed? It's a, a vent cover from. Oh, a vent, oh, a vent yeah. cover. Oh, yeah. That's why I, I thought I misheard you. Okay. A vent so grade, like I guess. Vent, I, I understand. Like that, like metal grating that covers it. Okay. Yeah, old houses have them. Right, um, right. Yeah. Do you have one time? I do. I do. You want to see it? Yes. Yeah, I'll get a second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they are terrific. Um, Stunning. Does, doesn't the Plastic Club have a bunch of those around as well, from what I remember? Or, or am I confusing it with the Sketch Club? I, it's this thing. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, my. Wow. Yeah, one time I thought I was going to put one of these in my bathroom so I could get to the plumbing. Um, and and I, I bought a few of them because I didn't have any of the right sizes. I could never part with them, and I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> Can you hold that up again? Yeah, this is... oh my God. Cool. That's awesome. Can you tell us about the backgrounds? Because it looks like each of your pieces has a special um, background treatment. Yeah, so um, the first one, and that's just uh, printing paper. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was just pretty white. Mm -hmm. um, the second three, yeah, so, and it, it's uh, wood tar. These are old panels that I had um, that actually I used um, paper towels to make that design. So I would okay. color, cover paper towels and then push it into the, the panel. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I've had them for a long time. I just never thought they were resolved. Um, but they did kind of kind of make this nice textury repeating mm -hmm. grid. Um, and then I really liked the um, the openness and the, the way that the grate didn't um, uniformly print like everyone is different. Yeah. And I, I kind of thought that looked like like street maps or something. Oh my goodness! You know what I'm seeing like shiny at the top. I, I, why is that? Is that shiny? It, it's shiny. Yeah, the original panels with the um, with the paper towel prints. Um, I had covered it with um, some sort of gloss medium. Now, so the, the background textures are a paper, that, that is a paper towel texture in the background. That, that is a paper towel yeah. texture, yeah. Okay. And could you talk a little bit about the, the liquid tar you're using? Is it actual, like, tar tar, or is it an art supply material tar? It's tar tar. It's the kind of tar you buy at Home Depot to put on okay. your roof. Okay. And you don't have to heat that up first. Um, no, I guess the professional ones you do, but you can buy the gallon bucket and it's, okay. um, I actually diluted it with a little bit of um, love those paint thinner, okay. um, mineral spirits, so. Wow. Wow. See, if, the, if your image was just those two figures there, <laughs> <laughs> it's a fantastic image. And then- I love those little figures. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could have like those guys. And it's a monkey and a prehistoric guy, and then if you zoom back out, we get to see another monkey climbing on the, um, see the, the figure there climbing on the structure. Oh, yeah. I mean, it evokes <laughs> so much all on its own. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, wow. that was my favorite. Unfortunately, they're all accidental, right? So I'm going to have to work hard at getting the little monkey guys back. <laughs> well, I like the way you, you do this a lot, um, that you kind of... Um, recycle your older art um, or reuse it, plunder it, whatever. I do, yeah. Um, How big are these, Tina? Oh, they're, um, oh, that's right. I guess they would be. <laughs> they're the size. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like 12 <laughs> by 16 or 12, okay. maybe, maybe 10 by 12, 16. Yeah. So. so is this paper again? And this is um, roofing felt, uh, roofing paper. It's a barrier oh, wow. paper. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's like two pieces of paper with a, a thin layer of tar in between them. Um, I, I had a professor years ago. It was actually an art history teacher, so go figure. Um, but he, he knew I worked with tar, and he also worked with this paper, which has tar in it. Uh, but he would draw or burn into the surface. So he gave me a roll because it's super cheap. It's like $6 a roll. And I, I've literally carried it around from house to house, apartment to apartment for years. 
but I, I like, I was hoping that the tar underneath would sink through and come up to the surface, um, which it did a little on the second one, but not so much on this one. Gorgeous. Um, this being the second one? Um, oh, no, that's, one. no, this is regular paper. Um, ah, here. Ooh. Yeah, you can see like the outline and there's like a sharp line and then a fuzzy ghosty line. So that's the tar coming through from? Yeah, I think so. Wow. Hmm. Wow, well, yeah. He was. You know where they have really interesting um, ornamental um, stuff is at the barns? Do you ever notice that? Yes. But you can't, you know, they'd arrest you if you tried to print from it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow, this one looks almost like a photograph, doesn't it? Oh, that's with, with a shadow. It, it's funny that you mentioned the barns because I love those metal pieces that he collected and they're yeah. so mysterious. And they always talk about it, but they don't really give the background. Yeah, uh, so my, my mother knew I love them and she went up uh, someplace up north and there was like an old barn shop that sold a lot of them and she bought me one. So I hung it right next to a painting just so I could have like the same relationship he had. <laughs> Well, I, I actually, when I said that, I was actually thinking of the exterior of the building. Oh, okay. Now those little metal pieces. Iron, that they, yeah, that is, there's interesting ironwork just like on the railings in the, in the exterior of the building. I, for, I wasn't even thinking of the interior. And I thought you were talking about the interior. I know, that, that would be very obvious. But no, I was thinking about the exterior because I, I like to just stop and look at them. And, you know, there's some great details on this one. It's like hieroglyphics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and it's like a maze, too. Yeah, that, right, right. I'm fairly sure that the club has these grates on all their heating elements. I'm, I'm fairly sure they do. I, I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh... <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not anymore. Now, now we know. But, um, I guess... I guess no one would object to rubbings of them. I, I guess they wouldn't want tar all over them, <laughs> <laughs> it cleaned up pretty good. I, I still think the Gwyns might get a little mad at me. The Gwyns may not like that, but um, they probably have these on their grates. Beautiful. Oh. But and after all that, I'm, I'm still really interested in doing the smoke prints. Yeah, well, you know, and I, I didn't really talk about them much, did I at all? I don't recall. You, you, no. You, I forget what you said, something about the, because of the way they're done technically, you thought it'd be hard to do at home. Well, the way they're done is, and, and the funny thing is, is I learned about these from a, a gentleman who ran the Penny Pack Environmental Center up, um, up by where I used to live. And I was just um, fascinated when he did this. So he, you take bacon fat and it only works with bacon fat and you, well, well, there's a reason why I'm, I'm telling you, you know, so you take the bacon fat and you rub it on a piece of paper, a piece of computer paper, and then you light a tall tapered candle and you wave the paper over like through the flame. And, and I've learned that it's the only the tip of the flame that's the hottest. So you kind of have to, that'll set your paper on fire, but if you go down more to like the blue area of the flame, that won't set your paper on fire. It, it's really bizarre to think about this. And what, what that does is it blackens the bacon fat. And what you have then is an instant ink pad. And it's also permanent ink. So you can, you can use that as an ink pad and I, you know, I'll go grab one in a minute since it's just a small group of us and, and show it to you. But the reason I know that you can only use bacon fat is because when we were doing this um, with a group of people that were interested, uh, many of the people in the group were Orthodox Jews right. and they would not touch the bacon fat. So they wanted to know if it would work with chicken fat. So I went home and tried it because I thought that was a really good question. And unfortunately, it does not work with chicken fat. Hmm. So, um, so that is why I know that. But um, 
then I was looking through an old Girl Scout handbook from the 1950s. And what do they have in there but smoke prints? And I was absolutely stunned that. Up the sore. Yeah, it, that it was in there. So, um, but I'm going to just step away for a minute and see if I can. Dig up my... And I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I bet bird suet, I, because bird suet is made from animal fat. Yeah, and I mean, I don't, and then that's beef fat, correct? So that might, that might work. I bet that would work, because I don't, we're vegetarians, so we don't have animal fat in the house, but we have suet that we feed the birds. Okay. I yeah, I, I don't know what it was about the chicken fat that didn't work and what it is about the bacon fat that did, but um, I'm sorry for looking down. I'm trying to find this smoke print. But it's um, interesting because I know there's a type of black that's called lamp black. Yes. And I'm guessing that that's originally how it was created, right? With the oil from the lamps and. Yeah. Yeah, that was actually burning the fat and collecting the soot. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So here, um, can everybody see these? Oh, yeah. yeah. So these are smoke prints. And. These are smoke prints. I'm trying to get these. So, so, and they are, per it's permanent. So you can watercolor over this, oh etc. Put these up again. And I haven't tried this in years, but um, I, I just, um, I don't know, like I, I didn't, I'm not always successful trying to make the palette like I do set the paper on fire a lot. So, <laughs> so I, you know, I just, I just didn't show it, but that's how it's done. So, so. that was made using blackened fat as an blackened bacon fat. And I ate a whole lot of bacon this summer to make sure I have a good amount of fat. And then I decided not to, not to talk about that, but I did enjoy all the bacon. So, you know, just so you know, that was not, not a wasted effort. So. Did, did you paint the fat onto the paper or onto yes. the leaf? On, onto the paper, you, you, and you don't paint it. You really just take your hand and smear it on. Okay. Um, and then you lick your fingers afterwards because it tastes <laughs> I know I'm making everybody sick. <laughs> but um yeah and then you and then you just you smoke the paper you just try to not set the paper on fire and and then as it the fat burns it it makes uh soot and you get uh, an ink pad so and so then you press the leaves onto the ink pad you press the leaves onto it and then press it on a clean piece of paper correct now, um, oh, okay. or you could you could even sponge like you could take a cosmetic sponge and and take up some of the soot and put it on the leaf. You could do it either way. You could you could put the leaf directly on on the soot or like kind of apply it uh, with a sponge or something. So it works either way. Now, does it have to be paper? As as you know, under the the under the bacon fat? Can I do it like on, a, like on a metal tray or something like that? I think that would get really hot though. Yeah. yeah. Um, it wouldn't burn. It's a really, it's a really good idea. Um, I guess if you had a big enough metal tray, like a cookie sheet, and you were just smoking it, that's a really good thought. <laughs> like, it's, it's probably worth trying. Yeah, I'm just thinking it wouldn't burn. It wouldn't burn. So... But I'm just thinking if, like the, you know, if it was a big enough pan, you know, you probably wouldn't burn your hands either. Like. Oh if, right. Yeah, because the metal. Oh, so, yeah, how long do how long does that take to blacken the fat? I mean, not long, but metal heats up so quick. So if you had like your little toaster oven pan, you'd probably end up burning your hands. But if you had a big cookie sheet, you'd probably have, you know, a little mm. more time before that. Because it's it's only one flame, but uh, I'm not following. When you say metal tray, I'm 
Are you saying put the paper that's been smeared with bacon fat on the tray? No, I mean smear the bacon fat on the tray. Oh, okay. That's really, it's worth, I'm, I might try that. I'll have to go buy more bacon. And <laughs> so. I have to say, I did look it up on YouTube, and the way they showed it was a candle with a glass jar. So there was no fat involved. Really? Um, so I don't know. I'm, I think without the fat, it wouldn't be waterproof. It would just be soot, right? But I haven't tried it out yet. I would guess, because, yeah, there's nothing then to, like, yeah. Th yeah. But at least for those who, unless they don't eat meat, it would be easier to use the glass okay. bottle, so. Um, yeah, the one in the Girl Scout guide also used um, bacon fat, so. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, and going back to the original lamb black, that was probably whale oil, so that was probably even harder to get a hold of, so. Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um so did anybody else have um things to share alice you had something right and neela has something and susan yes i don't know if um anybody else does i can show a couple of things um i'll just hold them up let's see how does that, how do i do that just, so this is uh just a rubbing from uh, a monument in a cemetery mm -hmm. um, and it's on tissue paper and I was going to go back and do some more on better paper but I never got there. So. Is that where we were this week? It's the one we went to, yes. Okay. And I went, I, um, you know how close it is to my house so, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, so I, I plan to go back. All right, can um, you it up again, Alice? Yeah, it's just a rubbing. Uh -huh. Um, there are a lot of, you know, people do rubbings of um, like the whole tombstone and things like that. And I, I just was interested in the little, some of the little ornaments on the, on the stones that are, are really neat. There's, the other one that, that I have is, is very, um, I don't think it'll show up, but um, it has, this one has leaves and acorns on it. It's really pretty, but it's it's so faint you can't okay. really see it. But, what did you um, use to rub, Alice? What were you I just using? used crayon? Okay. Um, I was going to go back and and use better paper and then watercolor and all that, but I I didn't do that yet. So something to do another day. Okay. Uh, the other thing I was going to show you is. Um, this is a I don't know it's getting a reflection, but this is a gelatin print okay. gelatin print uh, that I did a long time ago with ginkgo leaves mm -hmm. and um, other some other things in it. Um, I really like ginkgo leaves. And what was the pigment you used for on the jelly plate? This one? <laughs> I think this one was, this was like maybe one of the first things I ever did with gelatin plate. And I think it might be tempera paint. Um, mm -hmm. I don't remember. Okay. But um, I've, I've gotten some better paint since then, but I still like that one. Okay. Nice. Next. Who, who else had something, Neela? Did you have something? Yeah, I did. Um, I tried. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. That was um, a plastic holder that went around uh, an apple or a pear or something. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So I cut it in half and uh, yeah. tried just stamping it. Okay. And this one is uh, an onion. Mm -hmm. Upside down? Yeah, because there's words on it, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I pasted cool. the words on top. And then these pieces, um, I glued some yarn to a uh, cardboard 
and then use that to stamp on. Uh, with the onion, I had a question. Okay. I painted it with a, a paintbrush, uh -huh. and I didn't get a, a, a whole lot of detail. I just got a couple mm -hmm. rings that came up. Mm -hmm. Is that because of the way I applied the paint? Um, it, it, did you just cut the onion right before you used it? Yeah. yeah. So, so with vegetables, it's best um, to dry them out as much as possible. Got it. So, you know, if, if, you know, if, if this is something you're not necessarily going to plan, then, right. you know, if you just say, gee, I, I just have to make a print just right now, you know, like I would then um, maybe uh, blot it real good with paper towel if you, if you could put it in the oven for just a few minutes to maybe dry it out a little more. Okay. And, and just remember with printing, less is always more. So the, the less pigment you use, the more texture of the mm -hmm. thing that you're trying to print is going to pick up. Okay. So, um, but it has more to do with the, the vegetables being so wet. And I, I will say with the project that I showed in the beginning, we had these vegetables. So this was over a six week period. And by the end, they were so shriveled up and dry. <laughs> I mean, it was just, they, they almost took on another life form at that point. It just, and we kept saying, no, we're going to throw these out. But it got to be sort of a challenge. Like, let's see how long we can make these things last and, and use them. And yeah. um, so, uh, but I think, you know, um, just try to, to dry them out a little bit. If you, if you know you're going to do it the next day, cut them the day before or a few days before and just let them uh, okay. air out. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Because the onions were so juicy mm -hmm. that all the onion juice went into the paper and I kept smelling the onions for like weeks. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and I find that when, say, like a leaf, um, leaf printing, yeah. Um, similar to vegetable printing is that the first time you go, it, that's not your best print. The right. more you saturate, the more you like squeeze out the chlorophyll or the juices, mm -hmm. the best prints come a little bit later because the, the material is sort of drying out as you go. Thank you. So I have a lot of things. I, I kind of, does anybody else have to go? Because I have like a lot of stuff and I'm not even showing you everything. <laughs> All right, so should I share? Sure. Okay. I'm a little manic. That's fine. Um, that's just the way I am. I, I try to do something every day and, and I get a little crazy. Okay, so the first image, the first image I want to show you is this. And this is, Diane has seen this, I think, because I, I, I shared this on a Tuesday night. Um, I took a printmaking class. And so I took um, a hot glue gun on a silicone mat, and I just made this thing just to have something to print from. So I found it in my texture box, and I thought, well, that would be interesting to rub it and see what happens. So I did a, a bunch of experiments. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm looking for the carrot. I don't know how to do this. Okay. Okay. So there's, can you see that one? Yeah. The one that looks like rope. Okay. So that's just drawing a, uh, that might be a, gra it's either a graphite stick or it's that rubbing stone, like a litho, a big chunk mm -hmm. of thing. And that's just drawing it straight down the page. And it came out looking like this three-dimensional rope, which I thought was really cool. Not that, and none of this is really finished. It's just like fun to see. That no, no, let me just ask if you, was that, dragging it down the, the hot glue gun thing? Like, yes. So okay. All right. The next few things are just things that textures that I found in that one hot glue gun. Texture. Okay. Okay. And of course, you know, you can make, you can make text of texture plate with um, Elmer's glue or something like that. I happen to use the, you know, the, the hot glue gun and that, that's, that's the only one that I did. Anyway, so I just thought this was interesting because I was surprised that it came out looking so three dimensional. <laughs> So, um, okay, so there's the next one. I call this my fake Anders. 
<laughs> this one is, again, I just, I took the, I think the litho, that black greasy litho crayon, and I dragged it across, and I think I didn't do it in one swoop. I think I lifted the paper and, and took up the pattern in, in various parts of that sheet of, of texture. And then um, after I just had the white page, I looked at it and I said, you know, it needs some color. So I pulled out the Karen Darsh crayons that are water soluble. I didn't use them with water. I just used them straight up. And I just started adding color. And as I added the color, I started, that's where I thought like, oh my God, this is like turning into a, a fake Anders because it looked like to me like mountains. Yeah. And in mm -hmm. a lake. And, and then I thought, well, you know it, California's on fire. So let's get some oranges in there and yellows. And um, anyway, so that was fun, you know, because that, that was sort of like coming up with a blind random pattern and then just having fun with it. That's the terrific. The same thing was here. This, I did the same thing. Did you guys see the debate with Mike Pence and the fly? Yes. This piece is called The Fly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. Yes, we can see it. <laughs> <laughs> this is... Um, so I do paste papers and I keep them in a pile and they are usually made with acrylic paint. So uh, mixed with the methyl cellulose. So I think that green and yellow background is a piece of paste paper that I have in my pile. And then I ran that litho crayon over that pattern again. And it came up like something that was darker in some places and then lighter in others. So then I went back in with some crayon to, to pick mm -hmm. up some of those whites you know, to kind of vary the pattern a little bit. And before you knew it, it looked like an insect. So it does. Like, it does like, have an insect. Too. It's a very tiny piece. It's, it's just fun. This is a, one, when I went out um, rubbing plants in my friend's garden. And this was the most beautiful leaf. And the thing about the lesson for me here was wow. that she had such an amazing um, variety of, of leaf shapes. And I probably worked from about 12 of them. And that was probably one one thousandth of the kinds of leaf shapes that were in her garden. This was a big leaf. And um, what I realized when I, when I rubbed this one that I want to point out to you is that when you're looking at a leaf, you don't actually know what you're going to get. Because you see that veining, how gorgeous that is? Yes. Mm -hmm. On some of these leaves, you, like a sweet potato, if anybody has sweet potato vine, in your garden, like take a piece and rub it and see what happens. On the very edge, the perimeter, of the leaf. It, it almost has like a lacy type of veining at the edging and it's so beautiful. So my friend and I decided that leaf rubbing is about the meditation. It's about just sitting there and enjoying the pattern that comes up. And I just wanted to have some of these patterns just to have a record somewhere of in the middle of winter, you know, to inspire me. Because like look at that figure of that, that straight central vein. I mean, it's just, it's so evocative. Anyway, so I just decided, well, you know, I'm not going to change the leaf because I want that as a record, but I wanted to give the background some color to suggest, you know, to remember kind of how much chlorophyll there was in that little leaf. Okay, so this is a piece of schmutz that I picked up on the road. I was right after Diane gave her thing. I have been sketching a dead bird that I have in my freezer, and that's illegal. It looks like a bird to me. It looks like exactly. So it's I have dead two dead birds in my freezer, and I know it's illegal. And, and and so anyway, this piece, when I I picked up a piece that it was a clump of something that after a lawn was mowed, this clump of something was just thrown into a parking lot and was there laying on the sidewalk, and it was dry drying. It was pretty dry, so I I was like, wow, that could be printed. And um, so I brought it home and I printed it a whole bunch of times. And I'll show you another thing that I did that's really wacky from the same series. And um, anyway, the point of this is when that image came up, you know how you, when you get an, an abstract thing, you have to turn the page and let it speak to you. Mm -hmm. So when I turned it this way, I'm like, oh my God, that is so much like the dead birds that I sketched in my sketchbook that I'm going to actually collage. I haven't done this yet. I've experimented. You'll see this later because I might end up showing this somewhere when it's done on Tuesday night or something. But I'm going to collage in the eye because the eye of the dead bird was really chilling to me. And then do you see how this is a suggestion of a leg there? Mm -hmm. So I guess the question to you would be, um, I could collage in the, you know, the, 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 the feet, the claws. 
-hmm. or I could just leave it as a suggestion. And I'm wondering if there's enough marks there to suggest the legs. Well, can I make it, can I comment on this? Please, yes. I saw a dead bird in that immediately, but I'm a person that used to run around drawing dead birds. So, um, so that natural, you know, to me, it's like perfect as it is. I can see yeah. if, if you want to try to maybe cut out an eye and before you glue it on, just place it there and see like, but I, you know, other than that, and I don't even know if, you know, like that's just optional if you want to do that. But I, to me, it says dead bird. So I, I think it says dead bird, but I had just sketched them. And so I totally see a dead bird in this. And this is why I haven't done it yet because I have cut out um, pieces to suggest the eye and I haven't attached it exactly for that reason that to me, this is done um, to my eye. But I, I just don't know about how the viewer. Yeah. Does uh, anybody else see a dead bird? Well, yeah, you know, I do. And I would just title it dead bird. You know what the title is? It's another body waiting to be buried. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I don't. I mean, it's like a COVID piece. It's I'm, another body waiting to be buried. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was I was gonna say I'm not necessarily I'm not necessarily seeing a dead bird, but I'm seeing a dead something. Yeah. And maybe you don't want to make it so explicit. Very maybe, good. Maybe the abstraction is more powerful. Yeah, that helps me so much because as the artist, I mean, I depend on my husband um, as the, um, you know, Joe Public kind of like <laughs> helps me. <laughs> no, but he helps me because he's got a fresh eye. He didn't just sketch dead birds, you know. And so um, I'm not sure that he saw the dead bird. And that's what made me think, well, maybe it needs that spooky little eye. But that spooky little eye can come up in a new piece. It doesn't have yeah. to come up in this piece. Yeah, and, and, and even on your title, I would get rid of your first three words. So what, are, what, are, what is the title then? What did, what did I say? Your title would be just waiting to be buried. Waiting to be buried. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And it leaves it open to the viewer. Very good. What are you burying? It could be lots of different things. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that because I I'm attached to this piece. A lot of a lot of times it's like things are just fun things to do, but um, you know this has meaning for me and it really helps me to get your feedback. Okay, now and here's Susan, something. I I also saw a dead bird and I have to be honest. My cat just drug in a, a robin a few days ago, so I was like, that looks exactly alike. Um, but um, but it also seems a little bit open too, because some of the, the longer white lines almost look like straight. So I kind of like it having openness. But if you were curious, I would think maybe if you could scan this and make another copy and then do variations. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And then for the record, not that you really care, but um, I, I think what I did with this is I think I printed the schmutz twice to get this. <laughs> See how there's like, there's a lot of white there's a white part towards the, you know, the head part. Anyway, so that was fun. But I took one of those other, the reject pieces, and I did this really wacky things. I would not show this to anybody except for you um, because it was really fun to do. And it's kind of like, a, it's called Monsters Make More Monsters. So it's a little bit about, you know, our political life, our, 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 our the ugliness in our country. Um, and it's also Halloween, so here it is. So this is Monsters. <laughs> monsters make, make monsters, make more monsters. So it still has that, whatever you call that, that negative shape is that dead bird. Can you see it? The red. Mm -hmm. And then the other piece just looked like it was coming forward yeah. out of that. So I'm like, hey, you know what? Inside I'm about seven years old. So <laughs> there it is. <laughs> okay. So the next piece, this is also, this is a monument rubbing. And um, I would like to um, develop, um, I'm, it's sitting, this idea is like sitting in my head. There is a monument that's right here in Rose Valley and it's a Minquis path. And it was celebrating the trade path that the Minquis Indians had, early Dutch settlers. Huh. So these are Indians who are walking the path and they have the beaver skins in their sacks. So anyway, I 
So I took this rubbing. I thought it was really interesting to see the figures. Can you all see that those are figures? Sure. Mm -hmm. You get yeah. that? Okay. Well, I also took sections of the text because um, I'm kind of thinking that I just love this. I just love the way it looks because it reminds me of a cave drawing. But the text itself, I want to rearrange the text because we're celebrating like Indians trading with Europeans. You know what I mean? It's just a weird thing to celebrate. And then you kill the Indians, you know, and you send yeah. them off to Oklahoma. So um, I'm still like playing with, you know, what it means to me. But I, but I do love that image just in terms of just an image. And that, you know, like Alice just came off of a monument. But I did try it with graphite stick. And um, I tried it with a two, few different tools to see what would, would come up the best. So this is probably the best. And this is on a, actually a good paper too. So I think the rubbing came up, came up because I used um, a, a scrap of, um, uh, what's that stuff, Reeves? Maybe Reeves? Is this something called Reeves Lightweight? Diane? Reeves? Yeah. Reeves? yeah. That's what that is. Okay, so now this is a jelly print. I have, I, this is dedicated to Bob Lee because Bob Lee's a filmmaker. And this is the jelly print. And the jelly print, the feature of the jelly print is that it can take an impression. And as Bob Lee knows, when you're dealing with metal reels, they're so three-dimensional, you can't like print through the object. So using the jelly print is the perfect solution because you're pressing the object into a painted plate. And then you lift the object, you follow me, right? So this is a red sheet of paper that I did on the jelly plate. The yeah. undercolor is red. And then I used a white uh, water-based printing ink on the jelly plate and then press, I had two reels. So I pressed the reels in a few times.